Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel we are going to install a bootloader and Creality's latest firmware on the Ender 3 Pro 3D printer. And this should work just as well for the Ender 3 Not Pro and we're going to be doing this from a Mac, but since we're using the Arduino IDE this is largely the same for Windows so everybody should be able to follow along. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we are going to install a bootloader on the Ender 3 Pro. And we're going to do this by using the Arduino Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. And the process is the same for the Ender 3 as well. The reason that we're installing a bootloader is because it makes updating firmware a lot more convenient. Without a bootloader, updating the firmware is kind of an ordeal. You have to gain access to the printer's mainboard, connect a programmer between the board and your computer, and then flash the firmware onto the board. And so, yes, those are the exact same steps we're going through to install the bootloader. But once we're done with that, firmware updates happen via the printer's USB port, and they don't require taking anything apart. Now, you may not know this, but when you install a bootloader on a 3D printer's mainboard, that wipes everything else off the board. I mean, sure, the mainboard now has a bootloader, but that's it. Whatever firmware was previously on it is now gone. It has, in effect, forgotten how to be a printer and has begun its new life as a somewhat expensive brick. So in addition, we're also going to be installing the latest Ender 3 Pro firmware from Creality back onto the printer so that the printer can skip over that whole being a brick thing and continue being a printer. Creality's Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro firmware is based on the open source Marlin project. One of the neat things about Marlin is that it's free to use and you can modify it to your heart's content. But its license terms specify that if you use it in a commercial product, you are required to make the modified source code available. Now there was a bit of an issue with that when the Ender 3 was new, but the good news is that Creality now complies with these license terms. So we're going to be using the source code that Creality has made available to us on their website, rather than using a pre-compiled binary. We'll use the Arduino IDE to compile it and then upload it to the printer. And I want to mention that the current firmware's source code has a very important safety feature enabled. Yes, I'm talking about thermal runaway protection. A lot of Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro 3D printers were shipped without this feature enabled. Mine is one of them. But a comment in my Ender 3 Pro Thermal Runaway video says that a recently purchased Ender 3 Pro has the feature turned on. So, when we're done with this, there is a good chance that you'll have improved upon the safety of your Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro. Now, before we get started, there are a few things that we need. Now, first off, you're going to need the Arduino IDE. I've covered installing that in the past, and there's a link in the description where you can download it. So if you don't already have it, go visit that link and follow the instructions on the site to get it installed. Then we're going to need to download the Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro firmware source code. Now really, I think the only difference between the two source code sets is the logo that it displays on the screen, whether it says Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro, but I don't know that for sure. So let's go over to Creality's site using the link in the description and download the source code that is appropriate for your printer. A couple of little weird things here. They are hosting the files on a Google Drive instead of just having a download link. But the thing that we want in this case, since I have an Ender 3 Pro without a BL Touch, is this right here. The Ender 3 Pro source code 1.1.6.1.rar. So download that. And because it's a .rar file instead of a .zip file, you'll need some kind of unarchiving utility that can handle .rar files. Something like WinZip or 7-zip or on the Mac, you may want to get the unarchiver, and there is a link to that in the description. And as long as you have that installed, you should be able to open up the .rar file. And the thing that you're looking for is that Marlin folder, and we'll come back to that in a bit. We just needed to make sure that we had that in place. Lastly, we're going to be using a USB ASP programmer. It has two connectors. One is USB, and that plugs into your computer. 
The other is a 10-pin header with a ribbon cable. And the other side of that ribbon cable plugs into a 6-pin adapter, which then plugs into the programming header on the printer's mainboard. Now, the programmer that I purchased from Amazon a while back included a 6-pin adapter. However, the 6-pin programming header on the mainboard is too close to the connector for the LCD screen, and the adapter included with my programmer couldn't be plugged in, so I had to buy a different adapter, which has a narrower connection on the 6-pin side. If you don't have a programmer, you can pick one up on Amazon along with one of these narrower 10-pin to 6-pin adapters for about 10 and a half bucks total. There are links in the description so you can get those. You may also need to install drivers so your computer can communicate with the programmer to install the bootloader and with the printer's mainboard so that you can install the firmware. Now, having recently done an operating system upgrade, I needed to install the CH340 USB to serial driver on my Mac. And my trusted source for this is TH3D Studio, and this is included in their unified firmware package in the printer drivers folder. If you need the drivers, there's a link in the description so you can go download them. And I want to give a shout out to Tim at TH3D Studio for all the hard work that they've done on the unified firmware and for having all this stuff in one simple download. Now I'm planning on covering the installation of the unified firmware on the Ender 3 Pro in a future video. For now though, this video is all about the bootloader and the Creality firmware. Oh, and we're going to need the USB cable which came with the printer so we can actually load the firmware onto the board once we've installed the bootloader. Now, at this point, you should have the Arduino IDE installed. You should have the firmware source code files for the printer. And you should have the USB ASP programmer so you can connect the computer to the printer. With all that in place, let's get started. Now, first, we need to get the software side of things configured. So, launch the Arduino IDE. It will open with either the last sketch that you are working on or a new blank sketch. Close those so that they don't get in your way. We need to put the firmware source code files in the Arduino folder. So, inside your Documents folder, or the My Documents folder for Windows users, look for that Arduino folder. Open that, and then drag in the Marlin folder. With that in place, open the Marlin folder, then locate and open the marlin.ino file. This will open the entire Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro Marlin project. Beware, there will be tabs. Lots and lots of tabs. Now there is literally nothing that you need to change here, but if you do want to make changes, the places to look are configuration.h and configurationadv.h. If you look in configuration.h and scroll down a little bit, you can see the name of the printer on this line here where it's defining the custom machine name, and that's Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro. If you want to have a little fun, you can change that so it says something else to maybe personalize it, but that's not required. We need to tell the Arduino IDE about the programmer that we're using. So, on the Tools menu, select Programmer, then select USB ASP. There is also a code library that we need to install. Now, a library is a collection of pre-written code, which makes it easier for developers to control hardware or interface with other software. The Marlin project makes use of a library to display information on the LCD screen, so in order to compile the project, we need to have that library installed, in the Arduino IDE. Now the library that we need to install is the U8G lib library, and fortunately this is easy to do. From the Tools menu, select Manage Libraries. In the search field, type U8GLIB and scroll through the list. You want the one that's actually called U8GLIB by Oliver, so click the Install button on that one. Once it's installed, close the Library Manager window. We also need to tell the Arduino IDE about the Creality mainboard so it knows how to communicate with it. In particular, we need to tell the IDE that we're using a Sanguino board. But since the IDE doesn't include this board definition file, we first need to tell the IDE where to look for it. And then we can tell the IDE to install it. And then we can tell the IDE to use it. So first, we need to open the Arduino IDE's preferences window. In the Additional Boards Manager URLs field, add this URL. That's probably easiest to copy and paste it from the video's description, but I'm going to go ahead and type it in. Then click the OK button to close the Preferences window. Next, we need to open the Boards Manager window. So, from the Tools menu, point to Board, and then click Boards Manager. 
Type Sanguino in the search field and then click the Install button to install the board definition. When that's done, close the board's manager window. Now we need to select the board and give the IDE some specifics about it. From the Tools menu, point to Board and select Sanguino from the list. Also from the Tools menu, point to Processor and select ATmega 128.4 or ATmega 128.4p 16MHz. That about does it for software configuration. Yay, we're done with that part. So now let's get the hardware ready. First, turn off the printer and unplug it. In order to connect the programmer to the printer, we need to access the printer's main board. The main board is located in the electronics box at the front of the printer. Remove the cover. On the Ender 3 Pro, you access the main board from the underside of the printer. Remove this screw on the top of the box. Then set the printer on its side. Remove the three screws from the bottom of the box. Note that the long screw is the one which goes into the back of the box. Now be careful, there's a cooling fan attached to the cover, which is also plugged into the main board. Set the cover aside. On the Ender 3, you access the main board from the top of the printer. You'll remove three screws, securing the cover, and then lift it off. And again, be careful of the wires for the cooling fan attached to the cover. Now that you can see the main board, locate the 6-pin programming header, which is between the USB port and the connector for the screen's ribbon cable at the front edge of the printer. The six pins on the adapter board are labeled. On one side, you'll see VCC, MOSI, and ground. On the other side, you'll see them labeled MISO, SCK, and RST. The pins on the main board are not labeled, but the row of three pins closest to the front edge of the printer are ground, MOSI, and VCC. Plug the six pin adapter from the programmer into this connector, making sure that the VCC, MOSI, and ground side is toward the front of the printer. Plug the other side of the programmer, the USB side, into a USB port on your computer. If you've got the 6-pin adapter attached correctly, the main board will receive power, the screen will light up, and the main board will boot. You'll see the usual Ender logo and then the usual idle screen. If you don't see this happen, make sure you've got the 6-pin connector plugged in correctly. And don't worry, the printer can't actually move its stepper motors or heat the nozzle or the bed. The amount of power being provided by this connection is just enough to run the board. Before we actually install the bootloader, it is important to make sure that the Arduino IDE is able to compile the Creality firmware. If it can't, there's no reason to continue because if it can't, you won't have anything to load onto the printer after you install the bootloader. So let's just take a few seconds and click the checkmark button in the toolbar in the IDE. The project should compile without any errors, and at the lower left corner of the window, it should simply say, Done Compiling. Now again, if you can't compile this project, don't try to install the bootloader. With the Arduino IDE configured and the programmer connected between the computer and the printer's mainboard, we can install the bootloader. Now remember, once you install the bootloader, your printer becomes a brick. Well, a brick with a bootloader installed. So if you don't have firmware ready to load onto the printer, this is your last chance. Stop now. Okay, still with me? Great, let's go. In the Arduino IDE, click the Tools menu, then click Burn Bootloader. In a few seconds, you will soon have a brick with a bootloader installed on it. Now it's time to turn that brick back into a 3D printer. First, let's unplug the USB ASP programmer from the computer and from the printer's mainboard and set that aside. We still need to tell the Arduino IDE which USB port the printer is connected to, so before you connect the printer's USB cable between the computer and the printer, click the Arduino IDE's Tools menu, point to port, and look at what's there. You don't want any of those. Why? Well, because none of them have the printer connected to them. Remember them so that we can avoid them. Now plug the printer's USB cable into its USB port and then plug the other end of it into a USB port on your computer. The printer's screen should light up, but nothing else will happen. At this point, the main board on the printer is awaiting further instructions. Its only mission in life, at least at this moment, is to accept the compiled firmware that we're going to send it. So let's not keep it waiting any longer than necessary. On the IDE's Tools menu, point to Port again and, ignoring the items that were there before, look at what is new. 
On the Mac, you will want the one with WCH USB serial in its name, so we will pick that one. So now that we've got the right port selected, click the button with the right pointing arrow on it, and the IDE will first compile the project and then send the resulting file to the printer. When it's done, the printer's main board will reboot, you'll see the familiar Ender logo, and then you'll see the usual idle screen. So it's just like it was before, except now you've got the current Creality firmware installed on the printer and a bootloader. Well, now that the bootloader and the firmware are installed, unplug the USB cable between the printer and the computer. Then replace the cover on the electronics box. Once you've got the cover on again, you can plug the printer in and turn it on. With the current Creality firmware, my printer has a new item at the bottom of the main menu. About Printer. Selecting it shows the version number of the installed Creality firmware. With the firmware that was originally installed on my printer, I didn't have that. Now at this point you should be able to start printing. We didn't do anything to the mechanical aspects of the printer, so you don't need to adjust your nozzle height or anything like that. You should just be able to load up a G-code file from your SD card or connect your Raspberry Pi running Octoprint and get printing. Now you may think you've done a lot of work and then at the end of it you're right back where you started, and in some respects, that's true. You've still got a Creality printer with Creality firmware, but what you've gained is the ability to update the firmware via its USB port without having to go through the effort of pulling off a panel and plugging in a specialized piece of equipment just to do it. If you later add a bed sensor probe for mesh leveling or want to upgrade to the latest version of Marlin firmware, you'll have a much easier time of it. So now that you've made it to the end of the video, enjoy your newly upgraded firmware. Now remember, links to all the gear that you need to pull this off are in the description. If you liked this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down, but either way, please share your thoughts in the comments. And if you like the content that I'm producing and you want to help out, check out the description for ways you can do that. Shopping using the Amazon affiliate link really helps no matter what you're buying. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so that you don't miss any cool 3D printing stuff. Well, now that I've got the current Creality firmware on my Ender 3 Pro, I'm going to go print something cool. You do the same, and I'll see you next time.